Hi there, I'm John Moritz. I'm a coordinator for Curriculum and Instruction. And today this presentation is gonna go over how you can use the diagnostic results from your iReady assessment um, to help plan your instruction. So uh, this portion of the screencast, I'm gonna go over three things. One will be how to look at your diagnostic status report, uh, how to look at your diagnostic results report, and then also give you a couple protocols and templates for that you might use um, to help start your planning and to you know, break down the data. So the first thing we'll do is uh, let me share my screen. And what I've done is I've created a document that's going to help walk me through this presentation. Um, and I would recommend that you take a look at it too so that you can find the resources that I'm speaking about. Uh, to find it, you go to the Curriculum Supports website um, right there off of your single sign-on page, App Launcher. Um, go to the English Language Arts Supports, and then down at the bottom of this page, uh, there's an iReady support. And if you open this document, then it's a list of the tutorials that we've created to help you with iReady. And this screencast is going to be talking about part three, using data to plan instruction. So if I open this, then um, this is the document that we're gonna be using as a guide um, for what I go over today. So first thing is looking at analyzing the diagnostic results. So what I'll do is pop over here to my iReady. And if I go to, on the top bar, there's a reports tab. Um, you'll see class and student as your options. And then here, diagnostic status is the report that we're going to open. I'm not gonna click on that because I don't want to show any students information in the screencast. So I'm gonna look at um, this data in a, general way, um, but this is the type of report that you'll get. And I found this nice annotated um, document on the iReady website. So with the di diagnostic status, the first thing it shows is a student count um, for how many have not started, how many students you have in progress, and how many students have completed. And then it shows each student and their status below. Um, we have a couple students who are not assigned. I would imagine that this would occur if a student came in um, halfway through the year, and then they didn't get the first diagnostic. That probably would be how it shows for them. Um, if a student is in progress, it shows you the percent of, this, of the um, tests that they have left to do, or if they haven't started at all. And then down below, it shows the students who have completed. Um, it gives you the date that they finished. And then on the far right here, it gives their overall placement for how well they did on the diagnostic. A um, couple things to notice here on the left-hand side are alerts that you might get. Um, this first one is the timepiece with the number of days, and that shows that if a student um, is running out of time, the time period being 21 days. So hopefully we don't get to uh, students who are you know, getting close to 21 days of not finishing their diagnostic. But if you see at that um, timepiece icon, then um, that's what it's indicating. And then also there are these alert flags which um, shows that I ready the system um, thought that that student probably rushed through the assessment and that the data that they are receiving may not be um, accurate. So um, if, if you agree and you think that this, that data is not really representing what you understand about the student, here's one thing that you can do. Um, I'm gonna show you over here on the iReady uh, website, I can go to help and go to iReady Central. And over here on iReady Central, uh, they have a frequently asked questions um, tab. So if I go here, these are a couple questions that I've received pretty frequently throughout um, the testing period for our first diagnostic. And one was, um, how do you manage the hide assessment access? So if you have the iReady, um, you know, you've made an announcement to your class, then you might have some students who just jump in, click on that iReady tile and start the assessment assessment without you getting to give the full direction. So if you're worried about that, then this is a way that you can hide their access to the assessment until you're really ready for them to um, begin. Another question that I got pretty frequently was about that alert flag. So if they rushed, how can you give them a new, a new um, diagnostic? And that's right here. How do I assign or cancel a diagnostic? Um, if you click on that, it gives you the steps and screenshots, and it'll walk you through how you can reset a student who may have rushed. So uh, the Frequently Asked Questions page is a um, really great resource. Also, I'll point out that the, the page that I made, the agenda for the screencast today, um, I used all these resources here on iReady Central to build that. I went to the homepage for iReady Central, clicked on Using Your Data, and um, <clears throat> 
I used a lot of these links and resources to build the agenda. Uh, the reason why I've given you a shortened version of it is because iReady also has a product that services math, and then they also have um, individual learning for students. So based off their diagnostic, then they get a lesson and a digital lesson you know, right from iReady. And um, Glendale didn't purchase either of those. So we don't have the math portion and we don't have the individualized learning. So that's why I created our own um, agenda to uh, really just showcase the the things that we have. But I would encourage you to go to iReady, to go to their um, iReady Central, I mean, and to go through these tutorials because there's a lot more video content. There's a lot more teachers um, speaking. You'll see videos of students taking the um, assessment and giving, you know, testimonials and explanations and reflections. Um, and I didn't include all of those in the tutorial that I've put together because um, I'm giving you the short version. But I do encourage you to go um, and look through that longer version. So that was the looking at the diagnostic status um, and what you ought to do about the uh, rush alerts. So the second thing I wanted to show you was um, how to look at the diagnostic reports. So the way we do that is we same thing. We go up here to reports. And it's the second tile here for diagnostic results. I mean, um, again, I'm not going to click on that because I don't want to show student information. So I have a generic one here. And the diagnostic results report is laid out like this. So the first thing you'll see is a uh, pie chart. And it shows the number of students who have um, scored in each of these categories. Uh, the green, the yellow, and the red are consistent throughout all three of these charts. Um, the green, I'm going to make sure I look at my notes to get the exact language. Um, the green is if the student is on or above grade level. The yellow is if they are one grade level below. And the red is if they are um, two or more grade levels below. And right now, I've, I'm on this three-level placement. I do have the option of choosing five level placement. And what it would do is it would expand our colors to be five and there'd be a dark green and there'd be a dark red. And the dark green means that they're on or above and the regular green means that they're just on. Um, and then the dark red would be that they're three or more grade levels below. And then the regular red that you see here would be that they're two grade levels below. Yellow will always mean that they're just one grade level below. Um, but that, those are the colors there. Um, the second char chart is this um, bar graph, and it shows the number of students um, who have completed the assessment and their placement by domain. So these are the six domains that iReady assesses, and it shows um, as a class what the general results are there. Then down below here, um, we have <clears throat> individual students. And again, I've blocked that out with, these, with this text. Um, but you would see individual students on the left-hand side here, and it gives their scale score. It gives their overall placement of um, what, where they're at as far as their grade level placement. And then it gives their general outcome for each of the domains and how they placed on those. So the overall placement, you are able to filter there. You could use this dropdown and say, just show me the students who uh, scored in the grade two category um, and so on. So you can filter there. Also, any of these, um, you see that there's a carrot for up and down, and that shows you that you can have this the data resorted that direction. So if you wanted to have all of your students' um, data be sorted by phonemic awareness here from high to low, you can use the carrots there to do that. And then the fourth section here, um, there's a few different options for how you want to show this data. This, this default is typical growth and stretch growth. Um, and I'm going to read to make sure that I say those exactly right. So typical growth is the amount of scale score points that the average student who scores at this level will grow within a year. So right here, a student in third grade uh, who scores 612, their typical growth will be 17 points. So by the end of the year, if they score 612 at the beginning of the year, by the end of the year, in a typical situation and all the millions of students that um, use iReady across the country, the average student will grow 17 points. Um, and then if the stress growth would be if they, I don't, and honestly, they don't, they've, I haven't found an explanation of how they determine the stress growth, but with extra effort and with extra um, support, they could grow 21 points. Um, I do know that they, they've stated it's a realistic number. It is a realistic goal, the stretch growth, um, but typical growth is the just how much the average student makes within a year. Um, and then you are able to change this column. And I think I have a screenshot 
of that right here. So the default is um, typical growth and stretch growth, but you could also change the column to report your Lexile. So here would be your Lexile and range, and then also um, national norms. So how does that student com uh, compare to um, national norm in the percentile rank? So you can change those columns to um, report different data as well. But I could see the typical growth and the stretch growth being really great um, for goal setting and for uh, the kind of data digs that we use here in Glendale. Um, I had a couple examples of um, the student diagnostics too. So here, where all this text I've, I've overlaid, um, there would be a name for each student. And you could click on any of those students to look at a student individualized report. And so that would show up like this. Um, it'll show the students overall score. So for this student, uh, third grade, they got 460. Um, that's in the first grade range. So their um, typical growth would be from 420 to uh, for 460 to 493. That would be their typical growth. Um, that shows that they're not within the green, which would be on grade level. Um, and then you can see there's a bar here for the midline. That's uh, where they should be for average for the average third grader. But even with their stretch goal being 523, they would get into being on grade level, but they wouldn't quite be at their um, be right on grade level. They'd be within the range though. So uh, they talk about the stretch growth being a score that puts the student on their path to proficiency. So it doesn't necessarily show the number of points that they need to get to be on grade level. It's um, the maximum number of points that they think that they can make with extra effort, with extra intervention, that will put them on a path towards proficiency. Uh, here's another student um, for third grade. Uh, they scored 480. Um, so their typical growth, oh, sorry, no, they scored 521. Their typical growth would be to get to 543, which would be right below the midline, right below being right on grade level. Um, their stretch growth could be to get to 560 would put them up and above over, um, slightly above grade level if they were to meet their stretch goal. So that's the stretch growth and the typical growth data. Uh, let's see what we have next. Okay, so that's how you read the student um, diagnostic results report. And then I, I just wanted to make sure that I gave, the, um, gave you a couple different types of scaffolds or protocols for looking at data. Here's one you might recognize. I think that this type of um, document is widely used by collaborative teams in um, Glendale, and it takes your data with the, from the screener, from the benchmark, from iReady, um, which probably was Dibbles or ESGI, or, um, SRI before and your rolling assessments, and it lets you um, put all that information together to come up with a, a plan. Um, and then there's also another template here that was off of the iReady website um, and gives you some guiding questions, um, brainstorms some data-driven decisions, gives you an area to write, to you know break out your, your celebrations and um, identify areas of improvement. So there's a couple different um, templates that you might use to help with your uh, looking at the data, whether it's on your own or with your collaborative team. And then back on the um, agenda, there were just a couple general questions too that you, that might be helpful with um, your first peek into that data. So that's it for this first step. Um, I'm going to do two more, a screencast on um, the grade level supports that will come from iReady that can help support you once you have your plan, and then also um, support that you might need for goal setting goals and for having data chats with students. So um, those will be following this presentation. Thank you very much.